Welcome back to Pole Bar Garage, where today we're going to try to get that 71 Le Mans running or the 68 Cutlass, whichever comes first. I picked up these cars at a car lot that went out of business, and they've been there for like 40 years. Not even kidding. I picked them up for 500 bucks each, uh, and they're rough, very rough, um, clearly. So I think this one is pretty decent. It's a 68 Cutlass, bench seat car. You know, column shift, nothing fancy, but it's in pretty okay shape. Never mind the frame that's a wall. But I think this one could be a car, you know. Now this Le Mans, it is a Le Mans Sport, but it's also a little droopy. Uh, you know, if you couldn't tell, it has some body damage. This car is most likely beyond redemption, but it could be fun to get it running and. It's got a lot of good parts, if nothing else. Both these cars have been off the road for between 30 and 40 years. They couldn't really remember, but it's been a while. So let's see if we get the hood open on this Cutlass. This is the one I'm more interested in. All right, let's... Uh, there we go. Pretty basic, 350 rocket, I think. Uh, two barrel by the looks of it. Yep, yeah. little two jet in there. That'll probably work if it'll run. Somebody's robbed the radiator out of it. Hot dog container there. Plastic fender wells on Oldsmobiles. Always a little unique to them. Let's see if this thing will roll over. I doubt it. Looks pretty rusty. Got the mouse nest. Part of the fan shroud. Yeah, there ain't no way in hell this thing's rolling over. I would throw a breaker bar on it, but there's a plate bolted over the lower pulley there keeps you from getting to the crank bolt uh -huh. yeah that's not gonna happen let me take that plate off the lower pulley there we'll throw a breaker bar on it i've never really seen anything like that <laughs> must have been missing on every other one i've worked on this thing's pretty original all right come on baby. holy shit it turns are you kidding me what it had a little bit of a, a ridge and then poof. You gotta be kidding. Well, hell, this thing will run. Uh, guys, I actually wasn't expecting that to work. Uh, <laughs> I I was expecting that to be stuck and you know that I'd have to pull the plugs and soak it for a couple days. The thing is, it's so wet and soupy out here, I can't do anything. I, I don't think I can jack this thing up safely. We need to give it a day or two to dry out. I would roll it down the hill, except for when I drug it off the trailer, I chained it to this tree, and now it's chained to this tree, uh, like, a lot. So, we kind of needed to move backwards. I will go ahead and loop these transmission lines together, just so I don't forget later, and we end up making a bloodbath of epic proportions. So it's a couple days later, I've realized that, you know, because I have a job and I have to work for a living, it gets dark too early to work on that outside. So we're going to find some wheels and tires that hold air, try to throw them on it, and get it into the shop here. I think it's buried into the tire. Yeah, it is. One other major problem we're going to have to deal with here, uh, if you can't tell, it's not going to steer. Uh, that's a tie rod that seems to be sawed in half. Um, yeah, uh, this way bar is dragging on the ground. Yeah, this thing needs a complete steering assembly. Barely got a piece of the frame here. Didn't get under it much. Well, the frame must be halfway decent. Oh, good, it doesn't roll. Oh my God. Look at the frame. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Oh. It's bad. I've never seen anything like that. There's nothing to there's <laughs> nothing to bolt steering stuff to. Oh my god. Nope. Nope. Alright. Well, it doesn't really matter anyway, I guess. We're gonna try bump that thing backwards a little bit get our chain free from the tree I got a tire we're gonna put in between the truck and the olds didn't do anything did it no. yeah we're good once again behold my genius 
you see by simply running this ratchet strap up to the hood of the car to this tire I can now safely push the vehicle into the shop I'll be damned. It actually worked. I say we get it to run, and then we worry about the uh, lack of everything. This baby's been off the road since 1990. Doesn't show it a bit. Let's soak the hinges on her. Try to get this hood open a little bit more. You know, not that it's not really convenient right now, but uh, I feel like it could be better. <laughs> Asbestos. It's good for you. Reveal the Olds Rocket 350. Ah, cool. Before we do anything too wild here, we got to get battery cables so we can crank the thing. I'm gonna try to splice a, a cable onto this one that goes down to the starter. So I think it's still attached to the starter. Well, I'm lazy and I don't feel like crawling under there. Let's see if it's got any oil while I'm here. Oh yeah, full of nasty oil. Mm. Perfect. Oil change, probably. Yeah, we'll give her one if it uh, deserves it. Let's see what we got under here. Take stock of the situation right now. Little two barrel Rochester two jet. That, that'll run for sure. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Well, we should probably start soaking that now. Yep, this is all this will need. No doubt about it. It will need nothing more than this. Yeah, let's let that work on that a little bit. I have this random piece of cable from a winch I bought. You know, I'm just going to put an eyelet on the car side here and we'll just bolt them together. That's going to work. See that beauty right there? Mm -hmm. uh. That's good contact surface. Yep, so we'll just tape that up and then ignore it. <laughs> then we'll put a battery end on the other end of that cable and uh, she'll be good to go forever pretty much. Let's hook this up, see if it burns down. Then when it burns down, then we really don't have this problem anymore, do we? You'll notice that I uh, made the positive wire black and the negative is red and I did that for convenience. Do we have fire? No. No, it's not doing anything, which of course it wouldn't be doing anything because we don't have keys. So uh, that's our next problem. Let's search inside the car for keys. Apparently us moving the car settled it enough that the door doesn't want to open anymore. Oh. Use a uh, tire spoon, gets in there and it doesn't mess anything up. You don't destroy your fenders or doors. So this is a 68, of course. Uh, the good thing about 68 is the keys on the dash of these cars. It's on the column of 69 and up. Couple of cigarette butts in there. Factory floor mat, that's pretty cool. Oh my God, there's no floor in this car, is there? There's literally no floor. <gasps> There is literally not a floor in this car. I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> oh no. You know, <laughs> I don't think this thing's worthy of a frame off. <laughs> what do we got in here? Old AC box, radiator cap. Let's see if I can't get this door open over here. <laughs> well, it opens from the inside. Uh huh. I, I wonder if we could drill that out, you know? Yeah. And just put a screwdriver in it. These aren't bad to hot wire, because I can get right to the back of it, but I'd like to have the switch just to have it. But to me, it's worth a shot to just try to drill it out. I got the cylinder drilled out and I can spin the switch inside there but nothing happens. Kind of question whether or not that's working or not. I mean the battery's hooked up right? Should have headlights of some sort. It doesn't appear to have a whole lot of anything going on. There might be a, a power wire eaten somewhere in this. Maybe. I don't know. It's not very likely. I'm gonna pull this lower AC duct out of the way 
so I can get to the back of that ignition switch. Just make sure we got power on the ignition switch. Oh. You know, this stuff's in really good shape and probably priceless for somebody restoring a, one of these. Yeah, we got no power coming into the car at all, which is what I suspected. Let's go see if we can track down the cabin power. Have we got anything on the back of the alternator? No. There's the fusible link right there. So power goes down on these cars to the starter, from the battery to the starter, and then it comes back up. Probably this loom right here. This should work its way over to like the voltage regulator, wherever that is. Yeah, that's the loom right there. That heavy wire in there is the main cabin power. Let's see if we got anything on it. Watch that meter, will you? Anything? Nope. I'm gonna have to lift it up and then try to get to the starter from underneath and just see if those cables are hooked up. They feel like they are, but I guess that doesn't really mean anything. So I'm beginning to believe this might be a waste of time. I'm just saying. There is, there's nothing left of this car at all. If we tried to pick this up off the frame, it would just crumble into pieces. Let me make sure we got power down at the starter, and then we'll start tracing everything back. Okay, I have power down here at the starter. So our battery cable is working. You know, the rest of this doesn't look great, but it's here. You know, and then there is this one wire that's cut right here. That looks pretty suspicious. Well, I found the crank wire. Cranks? What if I do this? What if I just stick that right to... Yep. Yeah, looky there. All right, I fixed it. We're just gonna put a wire straight to the back of the alternator. <laughs> Maybe these earlier cars are a little different and they're supposed to go to here. Aha! Yeah. Goes to the battery cable. So it goes straight into the battery. It doesn't go down to the starter. Well, that simplifies things. And so it was that a fabled GM engineer wired the entire 68 Oldsmobile Cutlass through the horn relay. Well, what well, used to be the key works. Let's make sure we have power on the coil and then we'll sand those points. I want to make sure that that key is in the on position. It is. We have power on the coil. So we just clean up the points and spray a little brake clean at it. She got to pop off. I will guarantee you right now this will run because guess what guys? There's no rocket surgery to this. You understand? I mean, I know everybody and their brother does this crap on YouTube. Some of them much more successful than I. Yeah, you pretty much uh, spark and gas and anything will run. If it's an American car made before like 1975, it will run. That's, it's as simple as that. They're very simple machines and they will all run. Now, will they run well? That's different. That's why on this channel I try to take things to the next level. However, I gotta say with this car here, I don't know exactly what we can do with this, but we'll figure something out. They're sparking. I didn't even clean them up. I think they ought to work. Uh, we can tell for sure if we just pop the distributor lead off, coil lead, around that to something. When the points open, it should discharge through this. Yeah. Ooh, good spark, look at that. Do you know how points work, Jay? Uh, no. Okay, so basically, you have power coming in on the primary side of the coil. On the secondary side of the coil is the discharge side of the coil over here. Those are the wires that go to the distributor. So when the points are closed, it's completing a circuit and allowing power to build up in the coil, basically. Whenever this rotor rotates, see how there's lobes on the distributor here? And they rub against this rubbing block here. So as this spins, it opens the points eight times, because eight cylinders. It's grounded right now. The whole circuit's sealed with the points, right? So whenever I break the ground on the secondary side, it discharges through the coil lead instead of, you know, what you would, 12 volts. You, this is basically a transformer turning that into about 40,000 volts. And it's just building up in the windings of the coil. Boom, 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 boom. Gotta get this car unstuck before we can do anything else. A little sticky, no big deal. Nothing to worry about there at all. 
All right, I am going to disconnect the inlet to the fuel pump because there is a gas tank in this car still. And God knows, just in case there's anything in there, we don't want to be sucking it up. Kind of smells like varnish. I really hope that wasn't trying to suck something up, but not a problem now. Let's get the brake clean. <laughs> I've had a couple times lately where the O'Reilly brake clean just isn't spicy enough and they wanted the real stuff. So I'm gonna pour some real gas in here. Not happy about having to crank that dead starter. Back today, I charged the battery overnight, so that'll be nice and hot. Hopefully that'll kind of help that starter out. We can change the starter if we have to. I'm just trying not to. Let's throw a set of plugs in this thing, because really the engine is probably the only thing we're salvaging here, other than some odds and ends. Well, let's pop about and see what it looks like. Before I pull the plugs, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this AC compressor here. You know, I just don't think it's gonna need air conditioning where this car's headed. Oh hell, it's still free. Yeah, that's a good candidate to keep around. I was able to unbolt the hoses even. We could salvage those possibly, at least the ends of them. I've managed to remove this. Ah, there, look, now we can get to the plugs. A little bit better anyway. Ugh. Let's see what we're working with. I can tell already these are factory AC Delco green stripes. Looks perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. There's no reason for me to have bought any yet. We will see. Let's yank them all. All that penetrating lube we sprayed down in there. I'm kind of wondering if we might have fouled up the plug so much they just don't want to fire. And I want to make sure we keep our wires in order. Obviously, I know the firing order is 18436572. Let's just make sure that way we can idiot proof ourselves. And also, my handy dandy spark plug organizer. You know, you can buy, you can make those yourself. You don't even gotta buy that. I just did that. It's just the level of my genius. Uh, they all look uh, pretty good. Uh, except for old number seven there. I don't think he was firing very good, uh, ever. So, uh, we might have an engine with a dead hole. Do I want to look at it with the bore scope? No. Let's just throw some new plugs in it, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? It runs great. In my hands here are AC Delcos, huh? Yeah, good ones, right? It says made in China. These are garbage. That one came out of the box. It's completely closed. <laughs> They're junk. Now, see, I have my vintage AC Delco gap gauge. Gap all these bad boys to 35 thou and throw them, throw a new set of plugs at it. And, you know, I'll keep those around because we could still use those as something else. R43S is a pretty common GM plug. Get that number one in there. Yep. Yeah, I'd have JD put that one in there. I couldn't get my hands down into it. Let's try this again. Ready to crank? Yep. Keep cranking. Crank. enough for me. Let's get a fuel pump. Let's see if this fuel pump's got any suction. Ready when you are. Oh yeah. It sucks. Let's pull the fuel filter out of the carb first. Boy, she kicked up something, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Whew. Probably mouse nest or something in the oh. exhaust. 
Hey. Don't need to blow it out the exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right. As is tradition, it's stuck, but not anymore. Knows what's living in here. Uh, that yeah, looks alright actually. But we'll just take it out. Or we're gonna run it out of a boat tank. We don't really need a filter. We will now uh, professionally install the boat tank. Oh, that's done now. Our fuel system is plumbed, and I've rigged up a crank wire here to make it a little easier on us. Gas coming out of it. Yeah, it's got a hole in it. I don't think we need that anymore. I think it's got a hole here. Huh? It's got a hole here. It was spraying. Do what? It was spraying out the side where the gasket is here. Uh huh. I think it's leaky. Sometimes they get wet. They'll seal back up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it didn't leak at all. Come on, baby. Yeah. 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 It runs pretty good. Yeah, Whew. got the smoke back there. No, no, that's normal. <laughs> Man, I was getting hit by, I think, everything in this car. Mm -hmm. uh, she was running on her own there. Yeah. Cool. Let's try again. Whew. Damn. That carb is not happy. Come on, baby. You can do it, though. Those old Rochesters, they're indestructible. <laughs> when people say, just crank the fire out. <sighs> that doesn't work. Dang. Oh my god. You ever open the doors? Holy crap! Oh yes! Huh. You like the sauna? Uh, for carbon monoxide. <laughs> what the hell is in this thing? I mean, how many mice did we just slaughter? Well, the smoke is cleared. So. What do you say we changed the oil on this thing? I don't want to hurt it. Seems like it runs fairly decent, actually. It was definitely hitting on all eight, and I didn't hear anything weird. That smoke, that's just carbon and crap. There wasn't no blue, oily stuff in there. So I think you know, the engine's probably worth saving. Well, let's put the jack stands under the frame. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with the frame. I thought the front bumper on this thing was good. Um, not so much. You know, the license plate would cover that right now. <laughs> the heck? Well, let's change the, uh, let's change the Earl in it, because that's what car YouTubers do, you know, you uh, gotta, gotta just make the most out of every basic small task until you milk like a three hour video out of it. That oil's pretty, ugh. Pretty gross. It is not yummy, but it is oil, and so that's good. I don't see any water in it. 
kind of filter we got, Delco? Well, she was pumping oil, so that's a good yeah. sign. Uh, what kind of filter? AC, yeah. Then we spent some bucks maintaining this thing. God, this car's nice. Oh, man. Have we shown the floors? No, we have not. How nice they are? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Oh, did you find the solid part? No. Oh, that's all about, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And here. Uh-huh. I you know. was really more concerned of up here, actually. Oh. See this? Oh. <laughs> that's the firewall. <laughs> yeah, no, this thing's in pretty good shape. <sighs> oh, and right uh, there. That's just the carpet. <laughs> no. It's supposed to be that way. It's for ventilation. Oh, my God. It's pretty bad. This is the worst Oldsmobile Cutlass on the face of the earth. Now I've just put the oil filter on. I mean, it's a super complex process. I don't expect anybody to understand how to do that, you know. Oh man, <laughs> wipe it off now. <laughs> so I went to my local antique shop and they had all these vintage cans of oil. And they're all kind of just random weights and brands. But this is good oil. It's got zinc in it. It'd be great for this. Four, four bucks for a couple, then three bucks. I mean, it's cheaper than buying oil. And I'm sure some can nerd out there is gonna be like, oh my God, that can's worth $10. I don't care, I want the oil. I don't have an actual oil can opener. You always punch two holes, that way you get a vent hole. Kindle, good stuff right there. Oh, look at that. That's some like 40, I don't know, what, 30, 40 year old? Probably more than no, 30 years ago it was 1993. Oh my God. That's what this baby was meant to run on. Quaker State, 30 weight. So I just put 1040 Kindle in there. So 30 weight Quaker State, 1030 Sears, and 2020 DX here. Um, what will that make? I have no idea, but it's probably better than what was in it. Look at that liquid gold. Sears Spectrum 1030, all weather motor oil. So they're bragging about it. This must have been about the time dual weight oil came out. The DX 2020, I've never used 2020 oil. I imagine it's something like 1030. I got a couple cans of this. I don't know, you guys let me know what's 2020 oil. Is that good? I don't know. guess we'll find out. You know, I'm gonna guess this might have separated a little bit or something. Look, it came with miracle goo in it. I mean. <laughs> You don't get that in oil anymore. <laughs> oh no. Let's just put the sludge in the engine. <laughs> It'll be way better. Now that our super difficult oil change is done with, uh, we need to maybe put a radiator in it. Uh, however, I just don't think that's really gonna hold a radiator for very long. So we'll fix that correctly with this ISIS plate. And uh, you know, this, these are nice because they just bend the shape. It's what they were made for, the prisoner that stamped us out. We thank you for your service. Look at that, huh? <laughs> oh, damn, that's a thing of beauty. Man, all right, let me get the self-tappers. You can tell I'm really committed to doing this thing right. Mm -hmm. well, I'll just go ahead and shoot the self-tapper into it. And, uh, or three or four, 12. Not a lot there, is there? Uh. Could it be? A job too great for the self-tapper? Heh, <laughs> nonsense. We'll just put more in it. That wasn't it? No, that wasn't it, unfortunately. I mean, clearly, uh, the self-tapper gods are not smiling upon that part. So, we will just extend our workpiece here uh, with this workpiece extender. See that? That's a license plate? No. Don't be silly. <laughs> Look at that. That will hold a radiator with no problems at all, ever. Mm-hmm. Oh-ho! Look at that, huh? I like a glove. It's the uh, original radiator out of the Holy Goat. Well, not the original, but the one I bought first for it. That's pretty good. Boy, does that hose reach, even though it's cut off? Oh, it's close. Let me see if I can find another lower hose. Up, this upper one works. Look at that. Wow. It is made for it. See that pile of rust down there? Oh. <laughs> That's a good sign. That's what you want. Clamp off. Oh. Is it? Is it 
still pouring rust? No. Oh, good. Well, that was it then. Oh. 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 I would say that one's still good. Oh. Yeah, that water pump. Oh yeah, it's still good. Yo, uh, you want to? I bet it works. I bet it works too. I bet <laughs> it doesn't care at all. Uh huh. Well, let's find a hose. Well, I didn't have another lower hose big enough to go over the old water neck there. What I do have is chunks of other hoses. This is a original GM hose, by the way. It's only 50 years old. I mean, you know, it's just fine. Uh, so what we're going to do here is just splice them together with one of these things. You know, like radiator repair things. They work pretty good, but uh, they're easier to do off the car. So I'm going to make a mark. We want to make sure it's clocked right. Shove this in there. And then shove this end on this side. Probably really want a reducer for this, but instead I'll just spit on it. That's brilliant, really, truly amazing. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna just install this uh, professionally. I might, oh, you know, actually, wait, do I have to use zip? I don't have to use zip ties. We have this. Thing. Will this work? Um. Oh, no. No, oh, yeah, I will actually. Okay, so for some reason it's like there's a license plate in the way, which there's not. So here, let me install this professionally. Well, let's fill this up so that it inevitably leaks and makes my life hell while I'm trying to put tie rods on it. It's cold enough, we better use it real antifreeze. Is it pouring out the bottom? No. We're good. Now that we have some kind of cooling system, some fresh oil, let's fire it up again and see what happens, huh? So what I'm trying to do there by putting my hand over the carb is you're creating a really strong vacuum basically, a negative pressure inside the throat of the carb. And the idea is to pull the debris through the orifices. Hell, it's not really working that well this time. Come on, baby. It's got a big vacuum leak back here too. This nipple is wide open. Hmm. Alright, I just plugged that vacuum port. I don't know, maybe that helps. Can you stop? Possible that fuel pump has died. Is that a gas? <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's pretty low, isn't it? Yeah. Let's straighten that up, maybe. At least we got it to run for a little while. Yeah, I'd like to get her to sit here and idle for a minute. It was leaking gas out of the side, too. Yeah, I saw that. I don't care about that. What in the name of God is that? <laughs> that is a lot of pressure to be built up in a very short amount of time. I'm going to pull the dipstick. Hmm? 
It's not milkshaked. It's probably just full of crud. It's pissed off about something. Okay, we lost spark. Huh. You hear that dead hole every time mm -hmm. it's cranking? Why'd we lose spark? I wonder if the points stuck together. Yeah. I think we have a bad valve. Now that we don't have spark, I'm cranking. Watch this. It's pushing it back up through the top. It's got a bad intake valve. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. Low miles. Still got spark. At least out of the points. The bottom of this cap looks like pretty not great. I don't know. I don't like just quit altogether. Good morning. I didn't do a whole lot with this thing last night. I want to try to get this thing to run again. We lost spark, right? I think I figured out why, though. Here's the old rotor out of it, and it's pretty burned on the end. Uh, it's missing quite a bit. Now, how much is it missing? Well, here's a original Delco tune-up kit with a brand new rotor in it. You could tell it's missing nearly like an eighth of an inch. That might have been enough for it to not actually distribute the spark. Let's throw this new rotor in. And uh, I got a new set of points there too. I don't think we need those though. We'll save those for something maybe a little more deserving. Popped our new rotor on. Our cap secured down. And then we'll see if this thing will fire back up. If it will, then I'd like to go ahead and get started on the putting the front end of this thing back together. I mean, really, I'm sorry for this whole thing just turning into a complete mess. I really didn't think this car was as bad as it is. But, uh, look, let me tell you, if I tell you this car's junk, it's junk. Once again, I will try to suffocate myself by running this vehicle in an enclosed space. Yep. Whew. Get another vacuum line off right there, I just noticed. This thing's original enough that it actually had it's thermostatic spark control still hooked up. This vacuum line here, instead of just going straight to the carburetor from the vacuum advance, it goes through a thermostatic switch and then back to the vacuum advance so that it doesn't advance until the engine is warm. So we'll just bypass that, stick it right to the carburetor. It should function a little bit better. And then we will need to hook up our modulator line for the transmission as well. So let's get all that buttoned up. Let's give this turd the best shot it's gonna have. Let this baby run a little bit. See if we can't get the cobs blown out of her. This is still just crap. It's not, I mean, this isn't oil or anything. It's just garbage. I think we can safely let it run for five, I don't know, maybe even 10 minutes. Once again, I'm gonna pour a little water down the carburetor. You just drip a little water down the carb as it's running. And that will help break up the carbon on the top of the piston and the valve. Uh, let that be a lesson to you kids. Clear the leaves off an engine before you run it. Uh, I knew that. Oops. <laughs> no foul. Oh, you're still puking, huh? Yep. Yep. Well, as you can see, everything is going remarkably well. Well, I suppose I'll go ahead and de-fire hazard this thing. But I got most of the fire hazard out of the way. 
I feel a little more comfortable there. I don't know, what do we do here? Fill it up with water and just kind of let it puke itself out? It might be the best move. And also, we need to hook up transmission lines before we run this thing too much more. Thankfully, they're still here. So, hopefully I can just thread them into this radiator. That would be nice. I don't know what kind of transmission's in this thing. Uh, it does have a kick down switch under the dash. That's kind of what I was thinking, because I didn't recognize what the pan looked like. Uh, it is a two-speed, not a power glide. Uh, this would be one of those switch pitch ones. Super Turbo 300 or something like that. Uh, they have movable veins in the torque converter that changes the stall level of the converter with throttle position. That kick down switch under the dash isn't, it's not a kick down. Well, it acts as a kick down, but it's actually a throttle position sensor. I was really hoping there'd be a turbo 350 or a turbo 400 so I could, you know, use it in something. But no, of course not. Once again, I get shafted by the cutlass. Hopefully when I pull off this line I've looped together here, some fluid comes out. If it doesn't, we might have problems. It's wet inside that line, but it's not its not what I was really hoping to see. Rebend these where they'll fit. Well, I got the lines hooked up on it. Good thing I never even looked at the dipstick. Oh, there's something in it. All right, so we probably didn't do any harm, really. Are you kidding me? My funnel won't fit in there. Why is it always the little things? You guys have problems with that? Like, always the little, littlest most inconvenient little things that just end up boning you. <laughs> Fill her up and we'll check it. We'll get it running again and, and check it. See if we can catch it on fire again. Uh, and I'm not actually going to check if it works or not yet uh, until we get the front end together and I can steer it. We ain't going to have brakes. I'm not just, this is not worth doing brakes on. I do have enough extra tie rods and stuff laying around. We can piece that together. Part of my plan here was to box up this side of the frame with some plate, uh, but look at this. There's there's nothing left. I could box that all day long, and it's just not gonna do anything. This car is way too dangerous to ever see the road. Even if I plated that whole thing, I wouldn't trust it. So unfortunately, all we're gonna be able to do is let's just chop this sway bar out of the way. We'll get the tie rods off, what's left of them anyway, and that'll at least let this thing steer and move around the yard and uh, it can just wait until we find a better cutlass to use this thing for some parts for. Let's perform the classic sway bar delete. This is a custom modification. It's for those off-road applications. You know, James Garner drove a 68 cutlass in the Baja. And uh, if you don't know who James Garner is, you're too young. It was a pretty badass car. There she goes. I don't know what happened to this car, but they really didn't like it. And then you take your pickle fork and proceed to wail on this thing for days. I gotta get the wheel off so I can get the pickle fork into that tie rod to beat it. We just put these on like two days ago. Uh, <laughs> what? I guess it was four or five days ago, but still, what the hell? I guess it really, really likes these wheels. It just. Look, you can have them back, damn it, but I, what? What? This wheel is worth more than the whole damn car. Oh, hey, I got... Oh, I kicked the other one to keep right off. <laughs> the frame fell on my head. Yeah, at last, the wheel is off. Yeah, let me uh, go ahead and remove this tie rod. Then we're gonna work on that tie rod. That's gonna be the hard one. Hmm, yeah, yeah, that's pretty normal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those custom 90 degree tie rods. It's race stuff. Passenger side, of course, has the fabled Bluetooth tie rod. Uh, it's kind of primitive, you know, due to the age, but very ahead of its time. Bluetooth technology, 1968. Yeah, the other end of the Bluetooth tie rod here is where we're going to run into some issues, I'm afraid. Uh, there's just the ball left. Interesting. See, you know, that's how a tie rod works. It's just a spherical joint. It's like your shoulder, you know, and you. We go spinning on that. It's probably going to spin this too. Maybe we get lucky, but I kind of doubt it. Basically, no chance that we're going to get that out unless we get this cotter cut out. So let's try to cut it down and 
I don't know, make it as minimal of a problem as possible. Some stroke of luck, I've actually managed to get the cotter heat loose. So that's going to give us basically one shot at throwing an impact on here and hoping that just right, zips right off. Very lucky. You're not going to find this method in your pickle fork user manual. Jam it in there and then... Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, that works. These are the original tie rods out of the Holy Goat. Uh, this whole steering linkage is actually. It was buried in the desert for 50 years getting shot at. And it's still good. You know, of course it is. Because they just don't build stuff like that anymore. And uh, yeah, this will work wonderfully to make this steer and then get the hell out of my shop. Well, I gotta separate this side, but you know, the beauty is is that yeah, GMA bodies are all the same. 64 to 7 and then 68 to 72 so this stuff will bolt right in and you know, hopefully it's halfway aligned right I knew I kept this stuff around for a reason. I'm not a hoarder. I'm just a recycler. I forgot the boot. Can't forget that You know, need that for all those long distance hauls this thing's gonna be making. No, it never will Just in case you're stupid enough to find yourself in this same situation the uh, quick way to ID what the inner and outer tie rod is on GMA body. If the zert's on the side like that, that's the inner. If the zert's on the bottom, you know, that one's missing, we'll ignore that. But if it's on the bottom, that's the outer tie rod. They do that because if the zert were to face that direction, it would catch on the cross member and just rip right off. I'm pretty much probably the most professional mechanic you'll find on YouTube. This is pretty high level stuff. Before we put the wheels back on the thing, we probably ought to get them to turn. Huh? Both of the fronts are stuck solid. Uh, look, I ain't gonna go through the brakes or nothing. We're just gonna take them apart, take the brake apart, and that'll let the thing roll. Timken, of course they're Timken. Timken bearings, still made in the USA. If you're gonna buy a bearing, buy a Timken. I'm gonna give it its chance before I go whack it on it with a sledgehammer and just break it. it. Feels like the nails and the brakes snapped. Now it's just stuck on the wheel cylinder, which we should be able to get around. The shoes are attached to the drum. They're not wanting to come off alone. You know, they're they're com they're companions through and through. Two hours later. Oh, piece of cake! Uh, yeah, so we'll just very gently remove all of this. Uh, you know, it's not really necessary anymore. There's that. Uh, goodbye. The more you look, the worse it gets. Just uh, overall, overall, it's just not a good time. I don't. I really shouldn't be able to stab screwdriver through the frame. Reinstall this with its numbers matching grease. You know that's very important. They're gonna look for that at Concourse. Oh, would you like that? So it just spins like a million dollars now. Oh man. Why, well, nothing wrong with this thing at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sale, one owner, 94,000 miles. This one is similarly stuck. Let me knock this son of a bitch out. Yeah, this thing actually has brake fluid in it. I mean, I guess you could call it that. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Dry as a bone. Look, a miracle, this one works too. Have I really shown this, guys? Hmm. Uh, yeah. And break in half. Not yet. I want to get into the trunk and see how many corpses are in here. You know, three, four, maybe. But uh, also, we should probably at least try to wire that bumper up a little bit. Uh, just so it doesn't fall off immediately. I mean, it could fall off later, just, you know, not right away. All right, is Hoffman in here? Uh, uh, a couple of wheels. There's some stuff in here. Uh, first thing I notice is that that is worth a small fortune. That is a trunk light for any GMA body. That That's worth a couple hundred bucks. Western Auto Tires, f 7814s the jack. No Jimmy Hoffa. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? What the hell happened to this thing? Ah, there's the culprit. Snow chains. <laughs> yeah, those old bicycles probably aren't even dry rotted. They're still good. 
I have never ever seen this. I have seen some junk, ladies and gentlemen, but what the hell? Well, we never need to look inside that truck again. Everything's fine. One over car. Let's fix this bumper uh, permanently. Something like that. Twist the bailing wire like you're fixing a fence, you know. Yep, that's good to go. <laughs> Pay a little, little chrome spray paint. <laughs> Nobody see it. Thanks to the wonders of chemistry, I will be able to relocate our fuel tank to the back seat and simply run the fuel line through the lack of floor. It's just science, people. With our fuel tank professionally relocated, I will now fill the inside of the car with gasoline and exterminate it. I mean, uh, <clears throat> fill the gas tank up. Here, dogs. <laughs> Everything's kind of ready to roll here. Let's get it fired up, check the transmission fluid, and then send it and see where it goes. You know, probably downhill. Of equipment. Yes. Um, nobody's going to be able to see out of that. Oh. What? Oh, the rain. Nothing wrong with the rain here. Oh, it's boogie time, babe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drive it up and down the driveway a couple times but I am not driving this on the street buddy this this thing is just incredibly dangerous I guess we can see how it does in the mud all right yeah uh, probably get stuck yeah without a doubt the mail to the road thankfully my driveway is a quarter of a mile long so this is a true revive and drive you know why is it smoking I don't know no fire again maybe oh, well.
Who knew that this thing was an off-road machine? It's great. Come on. <laughs> Must be on fire. Yeah. Oh well. We'll just keep going. We think it's on fire. Mm -hmm. Let's put it in the shop. But don't tell the insurance. What the? What? What? It sounds like it's from the inside. It is. What is Smoke's it? coming out the dash. Wait, what? Yes. Well, that's really unfortunate. Uh oh. Um, I probably have to move a little faster. Stop. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, okay. I'm not seeing anything really concerning. Oh, there we go. What you got? It's uh, dumping black liquid everywhere. Oh, yeah? Brown antifreeze. Hmm? No. Where is that? Oh, the heater core. Oh. That's just the heater core. Hell, that's no big deal. We can plug that. <laughs> it's coming from inside. Well, yeah, it's the heater core. It's yeah. Because I turned the heat on trying to oh. make it work. It's dumping it huh? <laughs> on the uh, floorboard. Yep. The heat was working. Uh, working pretty good. Ah, yum. I feel like I'm about to get a little carried away there. Um, it's just uh, something, you know. Like, uh, yeah, I might have got a little carried away, but, uh, you know, it was fun. So. Uh, it gets around surprisingly well. Uh, maybe it's the weight reduction. I don't know. Bypass this heater core. I don't really know what else to do with this thing. Not a whole lot to do. Bypassing a heater core is pretty easy. You don't really gotta plug anything or nothing. Just pretty much take off one of the hoses and then just, you know, run the hoses together. Factory GM heater hose right there. It's good stuff there. Grab this right to the back of the intake. Well, that's fixed. Forever. So we'll go ahead and throw the air cleaner back on, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, looks like it had a newer filter put in it before it was parked. Knock the mouse dropping to the There we go. Need to put our thermostatic tube thing back on. I bet this air cleaner assembly like this is probably worth something. So I'll justify this car's existence in parts and then never sell any of the parts as is tradition. Well, that looks nice and buttoned up and at least that'll protect it. I don't know what else to do here. There's just nothing else we can do with this car. Uh, with as rusty as it is. I mean, it's just not safe. It needs a frame, <laughs> but it needs a complete floor pan from the trunk to about halfway up the firewall as well. It's like $2,500 of metal, and the car's just not worth it. So I have a mission for you. I love the 68 Cutlass. It's one of my favorite cars. Uh, this car has no title, and it is, it's a parts car. It really is just a parts car. You can take it from me, the guy who has saved a lot of things that shouldn't be saved. It's a parts car. If you know where a 68 Cutlass Fastback, I don't want a notchback. This is the good one. Has to be a two-door. Has to be a hard top, like this, meaning no pillar. But if you have a lead on a 68 Cutlass two-door hard top, I would be interested. So please contact me, pbgdalton, gmail.com. And then the, maybe that way we could see 
some of the really good parts from this go on to live in another car and then maybe we could still use this for something. I was thinking of putting it on the Corvette chassis. <laughs> I'd have to cut about 16 inches out of it and move the rear wheel or the front wheel either forward or back about 16 inches total to shorten the wheelbase. Um, you know, that's doable. We could do that. We could put it on a 4x4 or something like that. Something goofy, but the fact is no title. You know, it's a lot of time for not a lot of gain. It would be better used, like, all oh, this glass is in really good shape. If you ever tried to buy a back window for one of these, good luck. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of good stuff here. If you could help me out with that, you know, preferably close to Kansas City, Missouri, yeah, I'm willing to travel a day or so. I still have a day job, so I can't just, you know, leave forever and go get something. At least we got this thing to run, drive, it'll move around, and I can go park it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out the merch site. You know, we've got these sweaters right now. I've been wearing these sweaters. They're really thick and comfy. Put these on over a t-shirt, then put your coat on over top. I don't get cold at all. I appreciate you guys for watching. We will see you next time. I guess we'll dive into that Le Mans.